All right, young man, hello, how lovely to meet you. What is your name? Uh, my name is Darvis. Darvis? Yes. Like That's David, but Darvis. Yeah. Okay, Darvis. All right, Darvis, how old are you? Uh, I'm 23. Okay, so uh, are you then, uh, are you graduating? Have you done a master's? What's the score? Uh, this year is my last year's uh, bachelor's degree. So basically I'm getting my bachelor's degree this year. Okay, hopefully. Um, Most hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then what's the plan after that? After that, um, wait for a possible audition. Okay. Hopefully and uh, continue most probably my studies in the academy as a composer. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, uh, th that's very interesting. Uh, and so you want to have an orchestral job and be a composer or...? or... That would be ideal. <laughs> okay, and where would you like to have um, a, um, a, a, a job? Well, most... Preferably somewhere here in Latvia because I plan to study composition here, so it sort of goes hand okay. in hand. All right. Um, uh, and have you written anything for bass? Uh, the first thing that I have ever written was for bass, but that was a long time ago, and I've changed my mind about how uh, <laughs> I approach composition several times <laughs> since then, but I've written also for a bass, soprano, saxophone, piano, and for the bass, uh, viola, and piano. Why, why did you have to involve a viola? I mean, surely no, nobody enjoys that. Uh, I was told to. <laughs> <laughs> money. Money is the... Is the <laughs> well, not, not so much as money as yeah. a, a masterclass uh, yeah, yeah. initiative yeah. thing. Yeah, there is that very strange uh, Dittersdorf uh, viola and bass yeah, concerto, yeah, yeah. Which, which is which is extremely odd uh, at, at best. Great. Okay, so mm -hmm. obviously right now there are there are very few uh, openings, but is the, is there a job going in Riga anytime soon? Not that I know of, but I'm constantly looking for any okay. information, even not, maybe not even in Riga, where, wherever it's possible. Okay. Um, all right. So the pieces that you want to play to me are orchestral excerpts. Yes. Uh, this is, this is fantastic. Um, off you go. Okay. Um, I will start with uh, Mozart's Symphony Number no. 40. Uh, a question, should I play the whole excerpt from start to finish or yes. should I? Okay. Yes.
that's it. Okay, good. That's you never it, quite yeah. know. You never quite know where it's good. Good. All right. Uh, have you ever played this in, uh, in real life? In real life, uh, do you mean uh, as in within an orchestra or within a, some sort of an audition? Uh, either. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> no for either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. All right. The the. Um, you know, or orchestral excerpts are a strange, are a strange thing, because we're we're taking the most difficult bits of a very large symphony, um, and and sort of uh, uh, exposing them, and you know, we, then, then of course the question is, do we play it like we we're playing in an orchestra, or do we play it for an audition? And the answer is is a bit of both, actually. Um, I, I've been unlucky enough to sit through hundreds of auditions. Uh, I, I don't enjoy any of them. Uh, I, I don't enjoy that feeling of having somebody else's career in my hand, in my decision, um, at all. But what I do do when I sit, it, 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 it is that I sit there and I imagine assuming that the bass playing is is of a good enough standard because i mean a lot of these players are, are all extremely good could i imagine that person sitting in a group with me or sat just behind me normally if it's a tutti position and i'm afraid to say that the answer for for the way that you play it would be no and mm -hmm. although you play very well and i'm going to tell you why and mm -hmm. i suspect that once you've sorted out all of these uh, little uh, reasons why, um, that, that that will be that will uh, uh, get rid of um, issues which I think have got absolutely nothing to do with whether you can do the job or not. It's it's these. This is the problem with auditions. It doesn't actually show whether you can do the job. It just shows that you can play the bass, and. So what we need to make sure is that there is zero irritation factor. <laughs> so there's nothing that's going to piss somebody off. Uh, and that you're very, very musical. And that you know what you're doing. So, first of all, let's concentrate on the good things. This is so, But there's 10 people in the audition, all of whom play as well as you. So the good things are that you've got a very solid left hand. It's very, very well in tune. You make an okay sound. You, it doesn't stick out. It doesn't, it, uh, generally, it's not huge. Uh, and that's that. Um, and, and you look like a nice guy. So these are, these are, these are really uh, important things. But now I'm going to talk about the downsides, and I think this is something that you really, really must take on board because I'm saying them with love and and uh, with respect. Mm -hmm. It is clear to me that you don't know this symphony at all. You've never played it. I, I it, now at twenty. You say you're twenty three. I'm twenty three. Yeah. Right. So I didn't play Mozart forty until I was uh, actually till I was a lot older than you. If you haven't played it, you haven't played it. There's no. You can't make these things happen, um, and but we can we can learn how to bullshit very well, and the re the reason why we need to learn how to do that because you need to give me the person that's judging you in an audition the feeling of confidence that you know what you're doing, and at the moment I don't feel that at all. You clearly don't know the piece. Now, there's a really simple way of getting around this, and it's called Prime Phonic or Spotify or whatever you, the, the platform is that you use. And you sit down and you play with the greatest orchestras in the world, be them symphony orchestras or chambers. So you've got Academy of St. Martins in the fields, beautiful Whereas the Riga Chamber Orchestra, the the you know there will be recordings. There's a thousand recordings of Mozart 40, and you sit down and you play with five of them, and that's how I learnt to bullshit well because I put my ears in. I'm playing away, and what I did is that I worked out what there's a general flow 
in most of the recordings, unless you're going into period instruments and all that kind of stuff. But as a general thing, there is, there is especially at this point in the symphony, there is a general flow. And you need to mark that in whichever way you can. So, so um, and also an average speed. So you need to work out, let's take five recordings and you get to this point in the recording, it's all around about the same amount of minutes into the into the uh, movement. And so three minutes in or whatever it is. And you you work out what what the tempo is of each one of those. You mark it down and then you find an average. And that is your tempo. So what I, I don't want to feel like you're going to stick out. I'm just, you know, if it, you could play it faster, you could play it slower. It doesn't really matter. But... So, and then there will be an average of how they're playing it. Are they playing it in the string or off the string? Are they, how loud is it? But the most important thing is where the phrasing is. And there was zero phrasing from your playing. And what that screams at me is that you don't know where the phrasing is. And I, forgive me if this sounds harsh. I don't, I don't, I don't, I only want to help. But unless you fix this, you're in big, big trouble because you will hear one word and one word only, and that is next, and you're and you're gone, because music always wins. Music is always the winner, and if you play musically, that will get you further in an audition than anything else. Because people like me, who are in charge of these things. Forgive people for making mistakes. I have no problem with people making mistakes. It is a horrible situation. I'm extremely glad that I'm not having to do it myself. Everybody is nervous or we're just sitting there waiting for you to do the best you can do. And if that happens to be a mistake, fine. But if I'm sat there and I'm immediately on my phone uh, because I'm just bored, then you stand no chance at all. And you'll find that the most you will never be on your phone during a musical performance it's as simple as that so this is what you have to concentrate on you can play the notes there's nothing that i can tell you about playing the notes you can play them all um but you but you need to study what it is that you are playing so i've got a nice story for you now about mozart 40. the mozarts do, do you know anything about the history of Mozart? I know very little, but I do know this. That you know, do you know about his last three symphonies? Uh, they're all intertwined with each other. Correct. So there is a lovely school of thought. There is a, a lovely um, uh, uh, rumour, historical rumour, that he was asked to come to the UK, to come to London, uh, come to London, I'm sitting in Amsterdam, go to the UK, sorry, I've, I've, uh, welcome to Amsterdam, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, he, he was asked to go to, the, to London by a guy called Solomon. And Solomon was the same guy who invited Haydn to London. And that's why we have the Haydn London symphonies, because he invited Haydn to come to London and whatever. Now, Solomon... Uh, was an impresario, uh, German I think he was, and he came to London and he was basically ran the music scene in London and so and was responsible for the, the starting off the Royal Philharmonic Society and, and things like this. He was, a really, he was a big player in the London cultural scene and had this ability to be able to bring people over. He was also responsible for, for the, the uh, um, the first performances of Beethoven 9 and, the, you know, th things like this. I mean, he was, he, was a, he was a big cheese. I think he died by falling off a horse or something. But was, anyway, but he had his own orchestra and his own, his own set of players. And those were the people that would play the music of the composers that he invited over. Um, so it was his orchestra that played the London symphonies. And it was his orchestra that was meant to play these last three symphonies from Mozart. But Mozart died before he was able to come over. And Mozart was, of course, be able to, to write very, very quickly and perfectly. Um, and so he wrote these things so that he could then come over to London and boom, they're, they're ready. Unfortunately, he died 
uh, before he was able to come over. Solomon owned instruments, especially basses. He owned a lot of instruments. When he died, he, he had, there was a lot of instruments, but he had basses. And one of his basses I now own. And so there's, I've got this, and I only realised this story very, very recently. So, I, well, I don't own it. Actually, the orchestra owns it and I get to play it. I'm sorry. Um, I, I have it. And, um, and that's really, really nice. So when I play Mozart 40 on that bass and I get some conductor saying, you know what, it wouldn't have sounded like that, you know, in Mozart's time, I can actually say, that's not true. It would have, it would have sounded exactly like this. In fact, almost definitely on this bass. Um, so hang on a minute. Um, sorry, somebody just called and then, and then knocked off the zoom. Hang on. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so back to the point, uh, which is that um, I mean, we, could, we could go through it. Uh, we, we could do all the phrasing, which is the way I, I, I think it should go. But I think you should do the work, young man. I really, I, um, I really think that you need to sit down with the records and you need to work out where the phrasing is and you need to copy. So I just copy Berlin Philharmonic and Academy at St. Martin's in the Fields. And I just I literally, I just take little bits of all. So then when you're playing this, um, uh, this piece, it really gives the people that are listening to it the feeling that you know what you're doing. Now, one technical thing, that your down bows are louder than your up bows. So what I'm hearing is, forgive me, I'm just going to move over here, put this here, pick up my other orchestral bass, just making sure, can you hear that okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Um, so, uh, so, which is just not uh, what uh, the, the way it should go and um, so please be extremely careful about your down bows um, then the what bowing were you doing? And then, uh, and then what, how do you end up? Because I can't do it down, up, down, up, then I have to do up, No, down, I do down, it uh, down, down, down afterwards. Okay. Okay, I can't do that. And so I don't do it. Uh, the, uh, sorry, I've, I've forgotten the notes, but the so, and I think that it, can you do this more successfully? Uh, the reverse of what I did previously, basically. Is that what you did? No, I did. But what, what, what do you mean you did it previously? So in other words... No, no, no. We, we... I, I played it like uh, down, up. But should right. I play it up, down? Or... No, the, the, uh, all I'm saying is, is that I can't do it down, up. So I play it up, down, and I've got a good job. So it, it, there are no rules, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. That was, that was the joke I was trying to make, was that if... It, to be honest, if uh, whatever the notes are, it, you can't tell whether I'm playing up, down, or down, up. But you would be able to tell if I was. I, I really struggle with it, so I just don't do it. And uh, what I'm saying is, do the bowing that suits you best when it things like that. Mm hmm. Not because somebody said you need to do it down up. It, it really doesn't matter. So please don't be hung up on, on certain uh, uh, bowings. Um, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that, that was my point. And so then, um, because then, 
uh, uh, th then that will get rid of the heavy down bows. So can we just just try? Am I right, Vin? From there? Yes, please. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna do two bars before. Yeah, perfect. Good. Okay. Now, 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 if you were to, if you were to um, think about making it as Mozartian as possible, would you go? Or would you go? Okay, of course. So I need you to make it as Mozartian as possible. Can you just try it so that I, I know that you can do it? Okay. O again, the same two bars. Before. Yeah, perfect. Good, you're getting there. That, that's it, you're getting there, you're getting there. And it, it, it feels... It, it, it feels like it, it's it, we'll just do it one more time so um, oh sorry wrong notes but it doesn't matter so there's really a bum 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 ba -dum -bum -bum, yum bum bum so it's definitely the bounces on the first beat of the bar Good, good, good. Now, it's, so you can do it. It's no problem. This is this is great news uh, that, that you're able to do it. There are many that can't. So just so you know, but just be really, really aware. And this is the thing that I hear a lot is that by the fact that it's going up, the notes are going up, it will naturally get louder. So we have to work even harder to make sure that we don't because it naturally will get louder anyway. So it naturally gets louder. So we must fight really hard to make sure we go. And that's even more obvious when, when we're crossing over more stuff. So it's, it's what it naturally comes out at. Mm -hmm. So we've got to fight very, very hard to make sure that you really, really make it super musical. Okay, have you have you understood that point? Yeah, yeah, I understood it. Good, 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 go. I'm just making sure, good. All right, uh, I think that's the best that, thing that I can tell you about about this, is is that go away, study the, stu and play the play the symphony through. Have you mm -hmm. ever played it through with the, with the headphones? Uh, well, this uh, specific excerpt, yes. No, but the symphony. The whole one, no, but I should do that, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Remember, here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing. Maybe other people that are watching this might might uh, learn something from this also, if, if anybody else ever watches this. <laughs> that as a, as a person who's giving jobs out, I know that I'm going to change that person's life, hopefully very positively, by giving them a job. It, it, it's I, uh, that person because I don't get to speak to them so that person I can only judge on their playing so everything that I need to be told about that person is coming through what they're playing I mean that's it I'm saying the obvious thing but it's sometimes good to remember these things so if somebody turns up and you can hear very clearly that they haven't played the piece or they haven't they just haven't gone the extra mile then what does that say to me that immediately if if you were in my position probably you might think that that person's lazy that that person's arrogant that he's so good that he doesn't need to practice it probably you may think well hang on a minute i'm putting the effort in to be here you can't even be bothered to to uh you know go away and study properly who do you, who do you think you're trying to kid and before you know it, you're like, for Christ's sake, I'm was you're wasting my time here. Get off. And that could be the complete opposite of what that person is really like. And because we just don't know. 
And so what we might have is a complete sweetheart who, who works for charity all Christmas and, and is just has not played it through with the, with the record because he can't afford an iPhone. Uh, we just don't know. So this is why playing and preparing for auditions, you, you have to take much, much, much further than you could possibly imagine. Because it's, we need to get over all of those preconceptions and those, those things that we naturally come to our conclusions. So, so, you know, as human beings, when we meet for the first time, which is why this whole lockdown thing has been so horrible, is that we're not, we, we judge somebody so quickly from a handshake. And so we're having to, all of us, learn is somebody a good guy or not from just from a conversation with just with their eyes because we're masked. So there's so much information that we don't know. And I don't know about you, but I haven't made any new friends or made any new acquaintances really over the last year since lockdown, because I'd, it takes so long to, to work out whether that guy is a nice guy or girl is a nice girl. And this is the same thing with bass playing, that we, we have to immediately show that we're a good person and, and that we're, we're taking the job seriously and that I, as a person giving you that job, um, uh, uh, are, uh, I'm, I'm respecting your time by taking more time to prepare myself. This is a very sort of, you know, sort of, it's all the psychology of auditions. And I think that if you, if you prepare in a way that is respectful to the people that you're playing to, it will improve your preparation enormously. And, and uh, that is what I would recommend for you to do. And of course, in your case, because you've already just told me, what a job is going to give you is the security that you can play beautiful, you know, you can play Bruckner in the morning and compose your own amazing symphony in the afternoon. I mean, how great is that? That's just totally awesome. So how on earth can you imagine that they're going to give you that job unless you show them their, their respect? And, and, and it, it, it's, uh, I, I think I made myself clear. Um, okay, then let's move on to the next uh, excerpt. Okay. Um, which I believe is Beethoven, correct? Yes. Great. Another thing about Beethoven 9, for instance, is that, you know, it was, it was a, are we going to do Beethoven 9? Was it 5 yes, or 9? Yes, 9. Ninth. So the 9th is that this, this, um, this uh, um, uh, 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 recitative, uh, history books show that um, when it was when it uh, had its debut in London, it was conducted by a guy called Robin Stamp, I believe his name was. That might be totally wrong, uh, but anyway, and forgive me, I'm just trying to find the find it uh, whilst we're talking. Um, and there we go. And he went over to see Beethoven. Beethoven was meant to come over to London to, to, to the uh, premiere, but he was too sick. So he went over to see Bra Beethoven and, um, and said, you know, this, this recitative and actually figure M is just too difficult. Uh, it, it, the bass players can't do it. And what we know is that then Beethoven said, um, is Herr Dragonetti playing? And uh, Mr. Stamp said yes. And so then Beethoven said, then make it a solo, not a soli. So it was, and Solomon, who I was talking to before, gave his bass to Dragonetti. So it became one of many basses that Dragonetti had. So there is a possibility that the bass that I play on in the Concerto Bell played the London debut of Beethoven 9. Now, anybody that has a Dragonetti bass, owned bass, has the same story. 
because they think it's their bass that played on it. But there is a very strong possibility that this is what happened. So, um, it was in Beethoven's ears either a soli or a solo, depending on who was, who was playing it. So, in other words, play it out. Let's hear it. Okay. Are you taking it straight from the rest of the team? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to pick up my phone so now we're going over, not going too much over time. Perfect. Okay. way 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 better very very good i was just whilst you were playing i was just um coming up with my i've got this fantastic app called prime phonic i don't know whether it's made its way to riga or not anyway and it's it's like a classical music spotify 759 recordings they've got of beethoven 9 but of course what i always go to is carrie ann and the berlin film it. And that is the difference between you playing it and not taking on board what a recording does and you and just doing what your teacher has told you to do which is clearly very very good and studying uh, because you did you did no writ at all at the at the end of the uh, uh, sorry I'm in the wrong place sorry uh, now I know that it do I know that it doesn't say writ and here is the problem that do you do what's written on the page or do you do what's traditionally uh, uh, traditionally done and I, I get it. The problem is you don't have the possibility in an audition to say I'm doing it as blah 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 does it uh, or I'm doing it exactly as I think Beethoven should do it. It's you so you have to have it's it, it's like baking bread you've got to have certain ingredients getting in there to make it all work and one of those ingredients has to be an average of what um, uh, uh, of what they do. Now if I played the top five recordings of Beethoven 5 in a modern orchestra, not not a, 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 
um, period instrument orchestra, but in a modern orchestra, they will all have a writ at that point. So, should we do a writ at that point, even though it's not written in the page? Yes, is the answer. Okay. Simple as that. Uh, and and but you need this stuff. You need to work it out for yourself. So when I gave you that whole story about Dragonetti uh, playing solo and 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 all that, so what you played the notes really great. It's fine, but then when you hear the Berlin Phil play it. It's a very, very different way of playing it. And the difference, I'm afraid, is too big. So I need you to play more like the Berlin Phil. Because if you're copying the Berlin Phil, then you're copying the very best. This is Carrie Anne and the Berlin Phil. I don't believe it gets much better than that until you get into the period stuff. I, I, I don't know whether you agree. But, I mean, surely that stands the test of time of Carrie-Anne Berlin Phil Beethoven. I mean, it's, it's, it, is, it is what it is. It might not be your flavour, but it is the standard. And so this, this, is, why, and, and so this is why it's so important to play along uh, with the record. You have everything there. There is nothing that I can tell you that I'm going to make this better technically. It's all there. Uh, my dear friend, you've really, it sounds great. It, it's just, is that going to get you a job? No. It's great. It's not amazing. And the amazing bit comes with the studying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, studying as in, as in listening and copying. And taking on other people's I ideas. And, and it, it's, again, it's just polishing bullshit. So this is a perfect, perfect example. So um, well, let's just go through it and, and we'll just extend it and take it to the edges of ridiculous and, and just see how that feels. So the, first of all, you've got to imagine that you're sat surrounded by cellists who all think that this is their solo. So they're playing like Rostropovich, all of them, suddenly, finally. In this, in this incredible piece of music. I mean, what an amazing piece of music this is. This is mind-bendingly incredible. Imagine, it, it just, imagine one day you're a composer, one day waking up and we're just writing that and the whole world sings along with it. That's beyond belief. There isn't, there isn't a, a person on the planet who doesn't know that tune. That's amazing the strength of music I mean, talk about international language but so I mean, just this the fact that he starts it is just genius in itself but we could talk about that all day long but what you've got is cellists like they can't wait they can't wait they go there I mean, that's how they're playing it so that's what we're competing with so we need to go to them. So uh, you are playing it perfectly as written on the page. I just think we need to add a lot more passion. Can we try that? When I say forte, I mean forte, proper loud. Okay. So, so this is excellent. So, uh, so we're landing on that because that's got an accent on it. Can we just try that? So, you, it, it's not illegal to do two downs. Yeah, 
like imagine imagine that you're the tenor that comes or is the baritone that comes in after warm this right in the string let's hear the, a little bit of that grit But I really think that there's a writ there. I didn't do it enough, yeah. Good. And now, on top of me saying we have to do what the Berlin Phil does, because there's, there's nothing that I just can't imagine playing or studying these these excerpts without going through this process so you'll forgive me for for repeating myself we also of course have to do what's written in the part as well so it's we're always just sort of interpreting it in a certain way and by the way i i really don't think whilst we're talking about auditions and and the fact that you're coming up to this point in your career where you're starting to do auditions i don't think that you should tailor your playing to a certain orchestra I think if you're doing that, then you're kind of missing the point. The idea is that is that you you play the music in such a way that it doesn't matter what orchestra you play in, you're going to fit. And so you're giving them no reason to go, oh, for Christ's sake. Next, you're only giving them reasons to say yes. So if I were to go, or it doesn't matter. They both sound great. You're going to, you know, this guy knows what he's doing. It doesn't matter whether it's an up or a down bow. Really, nobody ever lost a job on doing the wrong bowing. It just, it just doesn't happen. What they lose jobs on is not, not respecting what's written in the part, not respecting what the traditions of what of of the way that we play uh, in symphony orchestra and bringing all of those into the pot. So the, the um, um, but what I mean is, uh, this is a full note, and then there's a line here, and this dot is short, is shorter, but but not super short traditionally. So. Uh, So is what I'm hearing. So, oh. and one, so the 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 down bow isn't twice as loud as the up bow. So, so it's not. Operatic than that. Ba bum and gum gum ba 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 be. Okay, again. Yep. Hmm? Okay, and there's a slur at the end here. Have you got that in your part? Uh, no, I don't. Ah. Okay, all right, fine. I mean, that's that's just traditionally what I've uh, what I've always done. But again, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It it it, it really but it really doesn't matter. So and one and can, can you see that it's a lot more operatic. It's a lot more open. It's a less less strict. So the, these are just different ways of, of playing this particular excerpt and what I'm trying to encourage you to do is is to really play as if 
you're surrounded by seven other ugly bass players. Uh, in your case, long-haired ugly bass players. <laughs> and, and a bunch of cellists that think this is their time to shine. That's how much noise you have to make. Um, and then, and then whilst, whilst, with, whilst you're with that frame of mind, you then have to, of course, play it technically perfectly. And of course, with a massive bucket full of, I know this piece backwards, I've played it a hundred times, even though you haven't. Got it? Good. All right. Now, I would like to listen, um, moving on to, was it only Beethoven 9? Forgive me, I've got the list, but... Uh, it was also the fifth. The third fifth. One. I would like to, if it's okay with you, I'd like to have a little, little bit of listen to that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Off you go. start with a uh, with an up bow I, I really just think it, it's it's unless they specifically write down bow in the in the uh, uh, party sometimes an orchestra will send you um, music and and the, it's always the big question do, do, do you do the, the the bowings that's in their part uh, that probably the answer to that should be yes but not absolutely always but I, I, unless it's specifically with a big down bow then I would okay you want to make half the amount of noise and just make sure that the bow is going in a steady speed because we don't want this a, a, a big uh, crescendo uh, again, we're playing with the cellos. Mm -hmm. So can we just try that, just keeping it super flat and super Okay, flat. I'll try the up bow. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, so, uh, um, so, yeah. so this is more of a heavy, not, 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 not a kick. It's a, 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 it's slightly more linear, uh, rich. Very, very good. I enjoyed that very much. Can you go from the, um, the, um, uh, this is a nice bowing for the F one that starts on the F. And then if you do down on the D flat. Uh, and the, uh, so up, 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 down, 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 down. And then, uh, then up. And then. Um, originally, I tried to play it. Uh, with a down bow, yes. But later, yes. maybe I could do it like. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's great. I'm saying start with an up bow, and then down bow, and then up bow. Uh, excuse me. Could you please repeat that? Up, 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 up. Down, 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 down. Yes. Then up, 
up, up, up, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 down. Okay, um, I'll try it now. Yep. Mm, again. That's it. That's it. Now, the, the advantage of this bowing is that you're, if you do just a, a down bow, it's always going to sound a little bit shit. So, and we need it just to be a little bit more airy. So, so basically, what we can't hear is how difficult it is. We don't want to. We don't want to be able to hear that. So. You just try that one more time? Yes. Good. Very, very good. Now, of course, what we... Yeah, that, that's an issue that I've we, had yeah, for a yeah. while. Yeah, and, and that's, that's how you can help prepare that. And then just take all of the, all of the weights out. Everything comes out mm -hmm. because remember the note is higher, so it will always sound louder anyway. Which means that we can play it softer, and it will sound the same. I mean, you're li literally you, you just you you don't need to bang it. Just try it one mm -hmm. more time. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, you know, you know, uh, I know, yeah. uh, uh, you know, now let's go back to the, to the thing that I said at the beginning, what's going to piss somebody like me off is that, do I want to be sat in front of that the whole time? No, because it's got nothing to do with music. It's, it's just irritating and that puts up a red flag and I'm like, well, it's you against another nine people that play just as well as you do. You play extremely well, by the way. Uh, you've got another nine people. I mean, this is what it's like. It's, it's that. And these are the things that I think you, you can work on. Mm -hmm. Trying to rub away the nonsense. Blow away the dust. The things that you don't need in your playing. And just get down to the nitty gritty to the things that you do need. Which is it, it, making a noise like that. Ha, is did Beethoven ask for it? Is it musical? No. In that case, get rid of it. Yes. And and you know that there's a problem, but it's still there. So you, you've answered your own question, uh, uh, basically. And and it's those kind of things. So I think for you, and this is wonderful to 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 uh, see you play by the way I, I i i think it's really really great what you're doing but i think for you if you really want a job in an orchestra you actually really need to take it a lot more seriously and even more yeah and <laughs> yeah yeah but i think you take the bass playing seriously but this is but uh, for sure i don't think i know i can see um, but I don't think that the way that you're approaching an audition and orchestral excerpts, uh, you're giving anywhere near as much depth. And so really get in there, really work out what it is that they want to hear, mm -hmm. uh, how they want to hear it. And the only real way of doing that is going to listen to people that are actually doing it. And the way we can do that for free is to listen to rec recordings and yes. just copy them but copy them really well not copy them oh i'm going to copy them and do it the way i want to do it just with a little hint no fully copy them because naturally it will um dilute a little bit when you take away the recording but it, the trick is to remember what it is that they were doing and put that into your uh, performance do you want have you got to do the bump yes okay Imagine, so now, let's just make this performance. Just imagine you're sat with a bunch of cellists. This is my chance. This is it. This is, it's nothing to do with the basses. It, this is, a, you know, uh, um, this is a cello moment. That's what's going to happen when you play this piece. Have you played it, by the way, in an orchestra? 
No. Right. Well, again, I'm just telling you that this is this is what's going to happen. So have that in mind. Put yourself in that space. Off you go. Uh, from the. Uh... Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I'll give you a job. Thank you very much. I'll see you in Amsterdam next week. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. oh, you missed you missed what I was going to say. I can only say it once. Uh, that's it. That's no, you too did. bad. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, 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 again, there's tiny uh, technical things, it, which, uh, but and I would say I wouldn't go across to the open D myself. And now, and, and what's going to happen is that the cellists are going to go. So, and we've got to go with them. But by playing, it's it's it, it's it's a, it's a trio. It's it's a dance. And 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 then of course you need to drop down. When each of the bum 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 Okay. And I'll leave you on this. I'll leave you on this because uh, you played this. This is fine. Technically, it's fine. I'm going to leave you on this little um, nugget of, of information about playing the bass and about doing auditions. And, and the problem with doing auditions is that when, when, when we sit and we play, there's always quite a large distance between us and the people that are, uh, are listening. And quite often now, there's, there's curtains. Um, so they can't tell whether you're male, female, black, white, green, whatever. It, it's, it, this is it's certainly the way it's going more and more. Thank goodness. Um, and so, and the, but there will always be quite a large distance. And the thing about bass playing is that uh, so much of what we do just drops off the end of the instrument. And the further away you sit from the bass, the less good stuff gets to the to the audience so in other words if you're playing in a massive hall you've got to work so hard for the for everything that you do to get right to the back of the hall um and it's also the same with the ugly stuff the ugly stuff also disappears so a lot of the horrible uh, shifts and all that and the and the and the grit um disappears also if you if you stand next to some really great violinists it's painfully loud it's gritty and nasty you can hear every bloody but by the time you're sitting in the hall it sounds like heaven so they've learnt where the distance is you know it's like when you're sitting in class and you say something under your breath about the teacher you need to learn, know mm -hmm. where it's gonna well this is the problem with the bass is it immediately just falls off the bass so anything that we do has to be exaggerated 10 times more than you can imagine. So take your gifts of being able to play the bass very, very well and turn everything up, turn up all the colors, turn up all the dynamics, all the writs, everything, turn it up. So it feels exaggerated to you, but I promise you by the time it sits to the, the person in the front row, and normally the jury is at least 10 rows back. By the time it gets to them, uh, it's perfect. Nobody ever lost a job from being too musical. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with that little gem. Mm -hmm. It's true. Music in an audition, music wins every time, over and above technique. 
So once you've learned how to play them, which you can, add the music and you'll be fine. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Perfect. All okay. right. Well done. Sort of. Very, really, really nice. Really nice to uh, see you play. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. Yes, that's great. All right. That's, that's great. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Tom's.